Evelyn was abducted by Joseph Coney's rebels on her way to school. She had been spotted by Joseph Coney and with him, it did not matter how old you are. If he wanted you, then you had no choice but become his wife. Evelyn, at what age were you abducted? Twelve years old. What year was that? 1994. And how did you get abducted by the rebels? I was coming back from school when I met the LRA and they abducted me. And the, what they told me was that they were taking me to Kampala. I could not tell that they were rebels because they were also putting on uniforms like the government soldiers. That means that they tricked you or they told you that they are taking you to Kampala. That's why you went with them. When I met them, they weren't kind, they were brutal. And when I realized that they were intending to harm me, I pretended to be deaf. So they told me they were going to teach me a lesson on how to learn to talk. So I was, I, they started beating me. After they had beaten me and opened up, they asked me where the main road was. And then I asked them where were they taking me. That's when they told me they were now taking me to Kampala if I showed them where the main road was. That there was not the only one abducted, there were so many other people, including one of my teachers who was killed. When you were abducted, where did they take you next? We were taken to a hill called Kelak Hill. And what, what happened next? Take us through that day that you were abducted. When we reached Kelak Hills, that's where we found there were so many other rebels and so many children that had been abducted. That is when I realized I had fallen in the hands of the rebels, when I saw other children like me. Connie has been known to claim having over 54 wives and fathered an uncounted number of children. For Jennifer, it was more than a nightmare as she lost a woman's most precious possession, her virginity and innocence to the most wanted man in East and Central Africa. How did you end up becoming Joseph Connie's wife? I was born in Sudan in 1997. It was after we had reached the Sudan and that was in 1997 that is when I became his wife. How exactly did it come about? I was born in Sudan and I was born in Sudan. I was born in Sudan. When I was abducted, there were other rebel commanders who started fighting over me. Each one wanted to take me. So when they, ref when they failed to agree, they started beating me up that I would rather die than any one of them taking them. So it was during that time that I was being beaten so badly that Kony himself came. And when he came, the others ran away. That's how he picked me. He took me to his home. I first became a babysitter to one of his children called Salim. And it was from then on that eventually I became his wife. What age were you when, when you became Connie's wife? I had turned 15 then. The fact that he found other people beating you up and he, he you know, they ran away. He more or less saved you from what would have happened. Did you at that point feel, feel proud of him or have a soft spot for him? At that time, I was happy that somebody had come to rescue me. By then, I had not known that that was him. Even when you were babysitting his children, what kind of person is he? The strange thing about him is when you are sitting with him, when you are with him, he is a very nice person. He is always very jolly and he loves children. But being a leader, wherever anything comes up, he is always blamed. But when you live in his home, you will not see that bad side of him. He's a very loving person and he loves children. Even before Connie made advances to you to become his wife, you, you already were seeing him as a nice person. Before 
when he rescued me, when I was so badly beaten, I was almost passing out. At that moment, he was really a very, very good person. And I continued respecting him until he turned me into his wife. That is when I started seeing the bad side of him because he was much, much older than me. How many other wives did he have? By the time I became his wife, he already had 11 other wives. But when I was released in 2005, by the time I escaped, there were already 27 wives, the ones you can actually call wives who were living with him, besides the other girlfriends he had. Where was his home that had his children and wives? Kony had actually homes he was given by the Sudan government. He had very good homesteads where he would say one of his major homes was in Juba and it is a homestead like our traditional Acholi homes where it is a very large homestead with very many huts where his wives and children would stay. When, when you had just been abducted, rebels actually were fighting for you. Did did he ever have a clash with someone else over you or other rebels making advances on you as well? The first people who fought for me were actually younger army rebels. They were not senior. But eventually two other senior rebels came in. That was Odonga and Tabu who fought over me. And when they failed to agree, that's when they decided to kill me instead. How long did you spent in that relationship with Joseph Kony? I was his wife for 11 and a half years. At what age did you say you became his wife? 15. Oh. Evelyn, 11 and a half years are many. Mm -hmm. So what, what annoyed you most about that time? The most challenging part were the tortures that we always went through and I remember when I was given 250 lashes for a false accusation that I was trying to escape, which was not true. Did you have any children with Joseph Kwan? Mm. How many were they? I think I have three of his children. I had four children with him. But one disappeared during the time of fighting. And right now I still believe the child is with the UPDF. And that was one of the motivations that made me escape from the bush. I remember her name is called Winnie. I had the, her name also being read over the BBC. But I've never come into contact with that girl. There are four, but right now I have three. How did you manage to escape? When my child was taken away during the fight, I started missing my child. And so that is the time I started thinking of going away to look for my child. I asked for his permission to leave Sudan and come to Uganda and look for my child. And he gave me the go ahead to come. And so I reached our village called Palabek. That is where I had my escape. I never went back. Um, Evelyn, around the time when you wanted your child back, you had one child? I had two children then, but I was already pregnant with the other child. And that child was born when I was already back home. How did you manage to facilitate the journey up to home? I was already used to walking because that was our lifestyle. We could walk distances. You walk from Uganda to Sudan, you walk from Uganda to Congo. So it wasn't hard for me. So when the time came for me to live with my children, I actually walked back with them. Her grief is evident. Her sorrow tangible. It is heartbreaking to watch and talk to Jennifer. Starting a new life has not been easy, as thanks to a society that continues to judge her as though what happened to her is her fault. The 11 years and a half you spent in Connie's grasp, what did they reap from your life? What were your plans that you did not manage to execute because of that captivity? I'm getting no ballo. The thing that pains me most, I was robbed of my education. 
most of my siblings and my relatives who remained back home have gone back to school. They are all well educated. That gives me sadness because every time I'm being talked to, I have to be interpreted for. That is the greatest thing that I felt I've lost my education. Well, when you came back home, how did you, what, what was the next step? Did you manage to find your family? My Duga, no, where in Amukanity, Mukanate, Babana Timako, Mamana Pe. When I came back home, my mother had died. I, I only found my father and a few of my siblings because I come from Atiak, where the famous Atiak massacre happened, and most of them were actually my relatives. So I found very few people, very few surviving relatives. The fact that you found a, a damaged family. Were they in position to help you? Were they in position to calm you down, to cancel you? Where na kujala? Pia madugu no dano ti kam. My family welcomed me. Though when I came back, they were already living in protected camps, which was so hard because the war was still going on. Even up to now, it is still challenging for me. I cannot exactly go back home because of my situation. So I still live in town. Have not yet been properly integrated in the community. Why is the community stigmatizing you? The stigma is still much, especially those of us who came from Konyi's immediate home. But I'm not the only one, even all the other girls that I came back with, they cannot still go back to the actual villages because of the children that we came back with. They don't consider those children as part of the community. So we are always stigmatized. That is why most of us still stay around town. We actually don't have homes to go back to because of the stigma, especially concerning our children. There is something resilient about the human spirit. Somehow, despite the most despicable things that can happen to a human being, the spirit is able to overcome, somehow. This is one of the mysteries of men. Evelyn's love for her children is simply special. She sees them as her exclusive purpose in life, as they're all she's got. Besides the community, what is your relationship with your family, your immediate family? My family has not exactly rejected me, they love me but they still have a problem with the kids that I bore with corn because they always say that corn killed so many people, there's no way you can come home with his children. So that one hurts me because there's no way I can do away with the children, they are mine. Even when I got them under those circumstances, they are still my children. So that remains a challenge to me. I cannot go back to my family because of the children I have. And I'm also afraid of the community. If I went back and they realized that those are Kony's children, something bad would happen to them. So I end up staying in town because of that fear that the children will not be accepted. Evelyn, did it at some point bother you to the point of, of reducing the love for your children that they are Joseph Kony's children as well? Anone. Mm. <coughs> At one point I had contemplated that I actually tried to look for the relatives of Kony who could take up these children, but I failed to find them. That is when I looked into my life, I realized that is exactly how I'd grown up. I grew up without people close to me because I was abducted when I was very young. So if I abandoned them, they would also go through what I've gone through. So that's when I looked into and I've started loving my children because none of Con's relatives has come to claim for their children. I am their only relative, so I love them. I live with them. How are the children now? Are they going to school? My children are fine and they're in school, but sometimes I have a challenge of fees, being an only parent. Sometimes I envy others because they have fathers who could easily pay cater for school fees or medical bills, but I am the only relative, so when I get challenges with their school fees, I feel bad because I am their only surviving relative. Evelyn, today how do you survive? Um, the first thing I did, I accepted the Lord, so it has given me a reason to move on. 
I'm born again, so it was even very easy for me to easily forgive. There are so many people who mistreated me while we were in the bush, but I've forgiven them. Then another thing that I do is um, the ladies that came back from the bush elected me. I'm their chairperson. So we have opened a, a small advocacy group where we are appealing to the government to give us help because what we've realized, the one they are focusing on are uh, uh, the former rebels who are male. They are the ones the government is looking at. So we are trying to appeal to the government to also look at us as women who were once in the bush who suffered the same fate, but nobody seems to care for us. So we are going to the government, we appeal to the EPDF that when they are rehabilitating the men and giving them the packages, they should also remember that we the ladies were also in that same war. All right. Thank you so much for giving me your story. Père Martin, no, I do keep me learning. Ah, look, personal appeal is what hurts me most. Um, every time they look at me, they think I want to escape and go back to coin. But one thing that everybody is forgetting that I was also abducted when I was a child, and it is me who escaped. And I'm so. I'm being stigmatized even by the local leaders. They cannot, I try to apply for a passport, it's now three years. They are always suspicious of me, but I consider myself a Ugandan. And I've always been here. I was abducted and I came back on my own accord. So that is a personal pain that I'm going through. I'm not trusted. Nobody trusts me. They think that I want a passport because I want to escape and go back to him. They do not know the hurt and the pain I'm going through because of being stigmatized. We just heard from Evelyn Amoni. Evelyn was abducted as a child at a very tender age and subjected to circumstances beyond her control. And today she has to deal with a baggage of effects that are hard on her, on her life, on the life of her children, and on her future. The only thing that she is is a victim who is trying to survive and get a grip onto life again. Let us try to help Evelyn and people like Evelyn. Life Stories is going to go into a short break. We return shortly with more stories of females that have gone through situations more or less evenings. We'll be right back.